Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today's video we're once again advancing upon our third person shooter minigame. Today we're going to be adding in an ammo pack. So when the enemy dies they have a chance in which they will drop some ammo which we can then pick up to obviously restore and replenish ammo so we don't fully run out. So I hit play we can test this out. If I shoot some of these enemies we should see that they should drop some ammo packs once they die. But again it's, I think I've given it a 50-50 chance just to show you for the tutorial so obviously all three of those did drop them. And I have 70 now, if I pick this up, it's gone up to 100 because I've given myself 30 for each one. You can change how many you have in each one and make it a random amount as well if you wanted to. But I thought I'd just leave it a nice solid 30 each time. And you can see when they die, not all of them are dropping ammo packs. But again, I've given it quite a high chance and probability for the purpose of the tutorial. So you can easily see it all working out like this. And again, I also have a lot of enemies, again, just for the purpose of the tutorials. So this is what we made today, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you want to do is you want to import your ammo crates static mesh or model which you're going to be using. So I've just got this one off of cgtrader.com, free and copyright free to use as well, and I'll leave a link to this in the description down below. And once you've imported this in, we want to actually make this into a blueprint for us to use and pick up. So to do that, I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, create an actor, and I'm going to name this ammo crate. BP, like so, opening it up straight away. Now there are many different ways to create interactable items which you can pick up. I'm going to be going over the basic version today, so if you're near it, you can press E to pick it up. We're not going to be doing interfaces, we're not going to be using line traces, however I do have separate videos going over those if you did want to know how to do that as well. Okay, today I'm going to be going over the basic version, which works just as well. So I'm going to add a component, adding in a static mesh, and I'm going to name this one Crate. I'm going to add in my ammo crate static mesh, which I have. So that's there. I'm just going to add it in like so. Again, for me, it's just a basic mesh with one solid color on, but I know what it is. Compile, save, deselect that, add a component again. I'm going to add in a box collision. And this box collision is wherever the player is, is if the player is inside this box collision, then they can interact with and pick up this ammo crate. So I'm going to make that as big as I want it to be. And I think that's going to be fine for me. So again, if the player is in this area here, they can pick up the ammo crate, which is going to be great for me. So customize this to get it perfect for you. Again, this is going to work. So I'm going to go to the event graph like so, deleting these three nodes, right click on our box collision in the components list, add event, add on component begin overlap, right click it again, add event, add on component end overlap. So we now know when we are inside and outside of this box collision, because we only want to be able to pick it up if we're inside the box collision, i.e. begin overlap. So to see if it is the player which is overlapping, we're going to come out of other actor and cast to our character, which for me is UE4 ASP character. But for you that could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. And we're going to do that out of the other actor of both of these, like so, because again, this means it will only work if it is our player character which is interacting with and overlapping the box. And what we also want to do is when we can interact with this and pick it up, we want to make sure that we can physically do that, i.e. enable the input in here so the player can actually use it. So to do that, I'm going to come off with cast to UE4 ASP character on begin overlap and get enable input. Target being self, player controller being get player controller, like so. And then the bottom cast off of end overlap, we're going to disable input like that. So when we're close enough, we're going to enable the input and when we're not close enough, we're going to disable the input so we can and can't use the E keyboard event or whatever it is you're using when we should be able to. So again, we can only physically interact when we're close enough. And then to get our keyboard event, what I'm going to do is go to Edit, Project Settings, go down to Input once it's loaded down here, and you see we have all these different action mappings already. I don't have an interact one, so I'm going to add that in. So add an action mapping, naming this one Interact, and I'm going to change this to the E key and I'm also going to do the F key as well, as some people use E, some people use F. So again, the benefit of action mappings is you can have two keyboard events in, or more than that, as you can see here. You can do keys for different consoles as well, and you can also set up key bindings. So I'm going to close this, right click on my event graph, and search for interact, as that's what I named it, and you can see we have that here now. So when we press E or F, this interact action mapping here is going to fire off, but again, only if we've enabled the input in this blueprint. So now we're going to come out of pressed off this interact action mapping and get a gate under flow control gate there. With that going into enter, open is enable input and close is disable input. So this isn't too necessary since we already have the enable and disable input, 
but it's always good to have it as well just in case anyway as it makes it nice and efficient. So again this gate is only going to open when we are close enough to it, so when we enter the box the gate will open, when we leave the box the gate will close, and we can only enter and exit this gate if it is open. So if we're not in the box and we press E, it's not going to exit the gate, and then obviously pick up the ammo. But if we are in the box and press E, it will exit the gate because it's now open, and we will then do the code we want coming out of exit, which again for me is going to be picking up the ammo crate. So that should work perfectly for us. And to actually pick it up, very simply, we'll come out of exit and we're going to cast to our character, which for me is the UE4 ASP character, and the object is going to be get player character. Now the reason we're doing this is because we want to obviously increase our ammo. So out of as UE4 ASP character, we're going to get ammo, and out of this, we're going to now get an integer plus an integer, adding the amount which we want to increase it by. I just want to increase it by 30 each time, but what you can maybe do is increase it by 30 or 60 or a random amount if you wanted to. But I'm just going to do it as 30. And as you for character again, we're going to now set the ammo. So we've got it, increased it, and now we're setting it, making sure to connect all of these in like so. So we're getting the ammo, adding 30, setting the ammo again, and then we're just going to destroy the actor so it looks like we have actually picked it up we're just getting rid of this in the world because we've already interacted with it we've done everything we want to do so let's compile and save and that is now our ammo crate bp set up perfectly working for us to be able to pick it up and interact with it perfectly like so increasing our ammo as we do that so again it's only going to be able to interact when we are close enough to it and when we do interact it's going to increase our ammo by 30 and get rid of this in the world so it looks like the player has picked it up so we can close this and let's test this out if i were to just place this in the world hit play, go over to it, you can see we have 100 ammo, press E, it's been destroyed and we now have 130, like so. It can obviously add a sound effect in here if you want, just place it before the destroy actor, play sound 2D or play sound location, and input the sound effect which you want in there. But I'm not going to bother with that. What we need to do now is set it up so it's going to spawn in when we kill an enemy. So I'm going to go to game files, enemy, enemy BP as that's my enemy character blueprint which is what you want to open up and we're going to be doing this again off of the code for killing the enemy so for me that is event any damage health equals zero true and here like so so the sequence then zero we're casting to our character and increasing the kills like this which again is something we set up previously but if you don't have that don't worry just go to the code where you are killing your enemy AI so when the enemy's dead fire off this code and this code is nice and simple we're going to hold down B, left click to get a branch, with the condition is going to be a random bool with weight. And what this does, it's going to return a random boolean of true or false, with the weight going from 0 to 1, and that is essentially the probability of it firing true. So think of this as a percentage. So 0 is 0%, 1 is 100%, so 0.5 is 50%. So I want it to be more likely to not spawn than it is to spawn, so I'm going to put it as 0.45. So it's got a 45% chance of spawning, so 45% chance of being true. Set this to be absolutely whatever you want, so you can have it as 10% i.e. 0.1, 90% i.e. 0.9, or 50% i.e. 0.5. Set it to be absolutely whatever you like. But again, for me, I want it to be 45%. So false, we're not going to do anything because we don't want it to spawn the box. But true, we do want it to spawn. So what we can do is simply just get a spawn actor, but I want to make sure that it's always going to spawn perfectly on the floor. So I want to find out where the floor is in context to the enemy, so I'm going to be using a line trace to do that. So out of true, I'm going to get a line trace by channel, like so. The start is going to be get actor location, so it's the current location of the enemy once they've died, obviously. And the end is going to be get actor location minus a vector, so vector minus vector, and we're simply going to leave it at zero, zero, and then the Z it's going to be 1500. It doesn't need to be that big, but I'm doing it just in case anyway. And essentially what this is going to do is it's simply just going to draw a line from the enemy's current location 1500 units down, so that way we know where the floor is, because this will obviously then collide with the floor, and it will return the location of where the floor is, so we know where to spawn this ammo crate. So to get that location of the floor, we're going to come out of out hit and break hit result, opening this up like so. And we're going to be using the location, because the location is the impact location, so where the line trace first collides with something, i.e. the floor. So also make sure you have ignore self ticked so it's not going to collide with the enemy. So come out of line trace by channel here, the execution line, and get a spawn actor from class. 
The class is obviously going to be our ammo crate BP, which we have here. Spawn transform, we can right click, split the structure pin, set the location to be location from this break hit result. So again, we know where the floor is. Rotation scale, I'm gonna leave as they are, as that's gonna work perfectly for me. And that is all we need to do to spawn in this ammo crate. So again, when the enemy dies, we have a 45% chance of spawning in an ammo crate. And if we are spawning in, we're gonna draw a line from the enemy 1500 units down to figure out where the floor is so we can then spawn in this ammo crate blueprint perfectly aligned on the floor like so. So let's compile, save and hit play to test this out. So if I were to kill some enemy AI, let's shoot this one here, we should have a 45% chance of it spawning so it didn't spawn one in that time. If we were to kill this one, let's see if that one spawns it in and it doesn't so let's keep killing them to see if we get one to spawn in. You see that one there did spawn it in on the floor. So I draw them away, you can see we have 100 ammo pick this up we now have 130 so that worked perfectly so again we killed three only one of them dropped it as it was a 45 percent chance of them dropping it and when we did drop it we could pick it up and collect the ammo perfectly as you can see there as well that one has also dropped one so i think that'll be it for this video so we've done everything we've wanted to do we've set it up so we can kill the enemy ai and they have a random chance to drop an ammo crate and when they do we can pick it up and add in 30 ammo to our collection or as many as you wanted and you choose so thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.